Hello, US1 Trucking fans. This is Jim. Thanks for taking the time to stop by my channel. Well, US1 Trucking is a fairly new topic for me on this channel, although I've had my set since 1983, and I'm just getting back into it again some 40 years later almost. Well, I had some questions on the Facebook forum as to how did I construct the slotless trailer to work with the U.S. trucking system. And so here I'm going to talk a little bit about it. If you watch any of my earlier videos, you know that I am a big slotless collector and racer. Mostly AFX, but I've also dabbled into Tyco TCR. That is the late 80s, early 90s version of TCR as that is really pretty much the original AFX speed steer. Now this trailer here came with this truck when I got it. And this is your typical slotless uh, system. Now I have modified this uh, Tyco TCR chassis to have the pickup shoes that the later one did because this happens to be a longer uh, chassis, 1.7 inch instead of 1.5. It took a bit of finagling. You can see there's the original AFX bumper on the front and the pickup shoes. Uh, but anyway, I like doing that kind of thing, modifying it. And it runs pretty well, actually. Uh, but you'll notice that there's a peg here. And on the, on the US-1, Tyco US-1 trucking, there's a hole. So it's a whole different system. You can't integrate these, even though they're the same cabs. Uh, they're entirely different chassis. So what I had to do was make some modifications to make this work both at the terminal, at the loading station, and at the unloading station. So we'll talk a little bit about all three. Now for the terminal, uh, I had to build this uh, brace here. I'm not sure what the truck, these are called on the trailers, but these normally have a little bit of wheels and so it just basically rests there on the ground. Uh, and then of course the post that I had to make here. And I use these out of styrene plastic. I get that from Evergreen Styrene. You can go to Hobby Lobby and purchase that styrene rod and plastic if you wish. Or you can uh, just uh, order it online. So the first thing that I did was I drilled a hole for, uh, for the pin. And I just ended up using a nail and then grinding it down with a Dremel in order to make that fit. Now you want to make sure that you drill in your hole so it's a press fit. And then I used a uh, cyanoacrylic glue, what like CA plus glue, in order to uh, fasten it in there. So then it's, it's going to stay in place. Now when I made these supports here, the critical thing is it has to ride up on these little rail here and that measures about 10 millimeters and you have to have it pretty much exact. Uh, you may be able to get away with 11, yeah, maybe 11 millimeters is what you want. Let's see what I've got here. Okay, looks like it measures at 12. Uh, yeah, just a little under 12. <clears throat> So that width is important and the height is important as well because it's got to be just the right height in order for the truck to be able to slip underneath. And then the peg that you have to make also has to be the right height. Now this happens to have a hole in there in order to fit this in. And I believe uh, that hole happens to be, we'll take the micrometer there, I think it's, or the caliper, I think it's, we're pretty close to over an eighth of an inch and uh, taking a look here, yeah, it looks like it's about three sixteenths. It might be eighth of an inch, yeah, just under that. Okay, so just under an eighth of an inch. So I just basically took eighth of an inch tube, and uh, and then took a rod that was going to be the right diameter fit in that hole, and I just basically measured the uh, with the caliper here. Uh, what the rod was on the other trailers. Now this support piece you don't have to have, the other trailers did. I thought maybe that was critical. I don't think it was necessary to add, but these pieces are. And when this comes up to the trailer, it has to just barely be underneath that. And so if you're measuring from the base of the trailer there, from the post, you're pretty much looking, and we'll do in millimeters here, uh, about Mm, four millimeters and then this piece here from that point of plastic measures about 12 millimeters now you notice the whole piece is a little bit longer it measures about nine or nine to ten 
and that's because I didn't want these to break off. So I used the Dremel cutting wheel and cut, sliced a hole in between these supports, or a groove rather, in between these supports, and then slid the plastic in so that way it's not going to come out. I mean, this is really solid. Now, for this rod here, what I ended up doing was taking, I think this happens to be uh, like 3 30 seconds rod. I drilled holes on either end using a pen vise. Okay, and then what I ended up doing was gluing that in with uh, just regular styrene plastic glue and then taking a wood burner with a flat plate and melting the plastic in. So you want the plastic rod to stick out, oh, maybe two millimeters beyond on either side and then melt it in just like you've seen with, uh, with toys. You know, you've seen those tabs melted in. Then file it down if that's what you wish to do so that way it's nice and smooth for when it goes in and this is strong i mean it's not going anywhere it's going to take a force <laughs> greater than what you will have with the track in order to break that so that's nice and sturdy as is this as is that so when this comes in that's just going to back right in pick it up and there we go now the next modification you're going to have to do may be to the back of the trailer. And so the back of the trailer, when you come in, it's roughly just a little bit taller than where the barrels are. And you'll notice that this trigger hits right at the center of the doors. Okay. So what I had to do was to take a sanding file, like just a regular nail file, and file that down smooth now these nails are were necessary because my son broke this a couple years ago uh, when he was four or five i don't remember which year but anyway the doors he broke the pins off and uh, that's why i ended up hacking this uh trailer and testing it out because it was already damaged so i used some nails there and that doggone nail got in the way and i really had to grind that down because the barrel kept hitting it but the doors aren't going to open on that Let's see, that just comes in really nicely. And, and you can see it's a little bit high, but if you force it, it'll, it'll eventually, all the barrels will pop in there. So just filing that down a bit, you should, shouldn't have any trouble. And if you, your son doesn't break yours, you, you won't have to add nails there that add some additional height. Now the final piece of the puzzle has to be with the doors. So as designed, originally designed for the slotless track if you rammed into this guy you know, hit that back door and then all the barrels popped out now you may notice that my doors move a little bit sluggishly that's for two reasons number one has the nails there although you can see this moves pretty freely number two i added an extra length of pin at the bottom see that plastic there that styrene rod because uh, once I got the door set with the nails, things didn't sit right, and the doors wouldn't open. So I filed this area down, I filed it down too much, and the doors wouldn't close. And it's just a fine balance. Well, these are really super sensitive, if you have a brand new one. And you may want to add a piece of styrene rod just right at the very bottom of that. And then just keep filing away until you get it to where you want it to. So that way it's not overly sensitive when you uh, back into the back into here and then the doors open or you back into here and the doors pop open uh, that's 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 my advice however when you back in pretty hard okay and we'll go ahead and hook up here it's gonna pop open the doors and it may take a couple attempts but those doors will pop open as this piece here happens to meet where that rear bumper is. Well, I hope this tutorial helped you out some. Uh, it's the best that I can do since everything's already built. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe to the channel if you're new to it. I will show you some more customizations as I go to them. Like this is a customized piece right here to go along with the American Pipe Company. Take care, and we'll see you on another video.